Hi guys, in this video we're going to cover section 5.6. This should be review. Um, we're going to review how to solve quadratics using the quadratic formula. So the, here is the formula. Our variable, which is typically x, is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And to use this equation, our quadratic formula must be written in standard form, which, remember, is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. That's how we want it to be written in so that we can use this formula. So then b is the coefficient on x, a is the coefficient on x squared, and c is the constant. Okay, so... When we use the quadratic formula, the very first thing we want to do is identify what are a, b, and c. So it needs to be in standard form, set equal to zero. So here, a is 3, b is 10, and c is 5. So then I just substitute those in to the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over... 2 times a. Okay, oh, and my a is 3. So we shouldn't have any variables in the quadratic formula at this point. It's all just numbers. Okay, and then it's just a matter of simplifying this expression. You can enter what's underneath the square root into your calculator all at once. Okay, I would recommend doing um, 10 squared minus, and then I would also probably put the 4 in parentheses too, so like this, minus. 4 times 3 times 5, okay, and we get 40. So here, underneath the square root, I get negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 40, all over 6. So we want to break down the square root if it's not a perfect square, and we want to simplify this fraction. So, square root of 40, um, let's see, we got 4 and 10, right, so 2 and 2. 2 and 5, so we get a pair of 2's we can pull out, so I'm going to do this up here. So we now have negative 10 plus or minus, we're pulling out the 2, and then we have 2 times 5 left, which is still 10, all over 6. Okay, so here I want to look at um, the two terms. So negative 10 is a term, and 2 root 10 is a term, right? Terms are uh, separated by addition and subtraction, so this plus or minus sign is separating those two terms. So both of those terms are being divided by 6. So we, I want to think about this as reducing fractions. So I want to think about 2, 6, and 10. What is something that goes into all three of those? And we want to divide that out, reducing that fraction. So 2 goes into all those, so we're going to divide all three of those numbers by 2. So I get negative 5 plus or minus 1 root 10, or just root 10, all over 3. So this would be our reduced answer in simplified radical form, okay? So let's just practice that reducing one more time here. So I get these two terms, so I wanna try and break down the square root of eight. So eight is four times two, so we can pull out a pair of twos. So I have negative two plus or minus two root two all over two. So again, I'm looking at these three values. What goes into all three of those? Actually two. So if I divide all of that by two, I get negative one, plus or minus 1 root 2 over 1. And you don't have to write the over 1 part, so this would be negative 1 plus or minus root 2 in its most simplified form. All right, let's try solving this one. Okay, so using the quadratic formula, we're going to identify what are a, b, and c. It's already in standard form. In front of the x squared is a 1. b is negative 4. We are going to include that sign in front of it as well. And c is negative 6. So using the quadratic formula, we've got negative b. So negative negative 4 makes it a positive 4. Plus or minus negative 4 squared minus 4. Here, we'll just do it like this. Minus 4 times a times c. All over 2 times a. Okay, so I'm going to do what's under the square root. Okay, I want to make sure I put negative 4 in parentheses so that when I square it, it becomes positive. Minus 
4 times 1 times negative 6. Okay, so underneath the square root, we again get 40. So we have x equals 4 plus or minus square root of 40 over 2. We actually already broke down 40 in the first example, and we got 2 root 10, so I'm going to rewrite it that way. 4 plus or minus 2 root 10. Simplify, 2 goes into all three of those, so divided by 2, we get over 1, but I'm not going to write the over 1 part. Okay, now they're simplifying here. Break down 64. 64 is 4 times 16, so I can pull out that pair of 4s. Oh, what am I doing? We get in the habit of just breaking stuff down. I should know 64 right off the bat is a perfect square. Square root of 64 is just 8, so 2 plus or minus 8 over 8. So if you get a nice whole uh, integer and answer here, go ahead and do the addition and subtraction. So we're doing negative 2 plus 8 divided by 8 and negative 2 minus 8 divided by 8. Okay, so if I do that, negative 2 plus 8 is 6, so 6 eighths reduces to 3 fourths. So we're going to get x equals 3 fourths from that one. Negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10. Negative 10 over 8, dividing both those by 2, we get negative 5 fourths. All right, so the part under the square root, that b squared minus 4ac, is called the discriminant. Okay, so if the discriminant is positive, then we have two real solutions. Okay, and the plus or minus is what accounts for that, right? Here I had two solutions. Here I also have two solutions, two plus root two, two minus root two. So that's what happens is what's under the square root is positive. If what's under the square root equals zero, there is one real solution because square root of zero is just zero, so adding zero and subtracting zero doesn't change anything. So we get one real solution here. If our discriminant is negative, there are no real solutions because we cannot take the square root of a negative number in the real number system. All right, now let's go ahead and just use the discriminant to determine how many solutions there are. So here, I want to still set my quadratic equal to zero, so it's in standard form. So I just want to do b squared minus 4ac. So I still need to know what are a, b, and c. So I'm picking those out here from this equation. So my discriminant, b squared minus 4 times a times c. So if I do that, negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7, okay, I get 8. So 8 is positive, so there are, here I'll say that, Great, 8's positive greater than 0, so there are two real solutions. So this will come as a question, it'll just say, use the discriminant to determine how many solutions there are, not actually solve. So if it doesn't say solve, I don't have to do the full quadratic. I just do this discriminant to determine is it two, one, or no real solutions. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. X squared, subtract the 12X over, set it equal to zero. A is one, B is negative 12, C is 40. Okay, determine how many solutions there are, so I'm going to use the discriminant, so b squared minus 4 times a times c. Okay, so if I do that, I get negative 12 squared minus 4 times 1 times 40. Negative 16. So negative 16 is less than 0, it's a negative number. So, there are no real solutions. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I want to just add one more thing up here with the number of solutions. So, remember, two real solutions is we have our quadratic is qu crossing twice. So, those are the two solutions is the x-intercepts. 
One solution is if it's just touching the x-axis in one place, so the vertex is sitting on the x-axis. And then no real solutions is when it's either opening up above or opening down below, but no crossing of the x-axis. All right, that's it for the 5-6 video. Thanks for watching.